Hey, what is up? Today we're in for a really good tutorial with the recent drop of Assistant API. It's been a huge change. Why this is such a big deal is uh, have a look at this diagram. You can build your own assistants and then you have these things called threads. And what threads do, they allow you to not have to worry about the context window, the history, um, any of that, OpenAI will just handle that and the user can send as many messages as they want. So it really abstracts a lot of the work that you would used to have to do to build these chatbots. All right, let me give you a demo of what we're going to be building. So you see in my Streamlit app, there's a button on the nav side to start the chat. And then you can just be like, hi, what is up? My name is Alex. And you see it replies and you can be like, what is my name? it will remember it without me having to really build in any of the context. And then I just have a button here to exit the chat. And if you click start chat again, it'll start a new thread. Before we get into coding this, let's just read some of the OpenAI documentation, explain a little bit more what Assistant API is. You see, you can break it down as you have Assistant, Thread, Message, Run. The Assistant is the purpose-built AI, so you can think of the assistant's kind of housing all the threads, all the messages, all the runs, everything's under this assistant. And then you have a thread under the assistant. So the assistant might have multiple threads and each thread is a conversation between the user and our assistant bot. Automatically handles truncation to fit content into the model's context. Next, you have messages. So the messages are going to be added under the thread. So each thread will have a multiple messages usually, and they can include like text, images, files, and other stuff. Okay, and then we have the run, where the assistant pens the message to the thread, and it kind of it like decides the best tools and stuff to use. So this is how you create your assistant. You don't necessarily have to create the assistant in the code. We can create it right here and just reference the assistant ID. Then we have creating our thread here. There's also some things you can do with the annotation. All right, this is the important stuff. This is how you do the run. You have to do this. Okay, and then clarifying on that run step thing. So the run steps have, it's the same meaning as the run status. So we either have expired, canceled, failed, and complete, completed. And while our run's in progress, we can't add additional messages to the thread. We have to wait till our current run is complete. And then lastly, here's some uh, limitations that it seems like the OpenAI team's working hard on, such as support for DALI, image uh, user message creation with images, and a few other things. All right, so without further ado, let's go into VS Code. And I'm gonna walk you through uh, block by block on how to make this. So we have a new Python file. So we're gonna need uh, three things. We're gonna need to import OpenAI. We're gonna need to import Streamlit as ST, and then we're gonna import time. All right, the very first thing, let's make this variable. We're gonna call it assistant ID. And we're going to have to go back into OpenAI because we need to get this assistant ID. So you see, if I go under this little robot icon and click on assistance, we can go ahead and click on create. Let's give our assistant a name. I thought it would be kind of fun to make like a cat themed uh, GPT that speaks in a mix of like cat language and English. So we're going to call it cat GBT instructions. You answer. Mostly in meows, but are able to speak for English answer is just various meow. All right, so that'll be our instructions. And then a uh, cool thing right here, you can turn on a uh, retrieval, uh, code interpreter, which are, you know, very powerful tools that can help you work with files and uh, run running code. So uh, in general, these are great to have on. Uh, definitely suggest reading the documentation on these because they're super powerful. You can also add files in here. So your tool will have access to files. Like maybe uh, you wanted to add a knowledge base about um, foods cats like or something. And uh, you can do that right here. Oh, and of course, you can also support uh, custom functions. Anyway, we've created our system ID here. 
and we need to copy the ID. You see that? The ID. It's uh, can copy it here or it's right here. We need to copy that. And we'll go back into VS Code and we'll paste our assistant ID right in here. All right, and then we'll have a client. Next, we're going to have to initialize two different session states for OpenAI. Initializing these states as uh, the start chat is false and uh, for threads, thread ID, there's uh, none inside of it. I mean, basically like session states, it ensures you know, if there's different reruns, the states will be uh, stored. I'm definitely not a, a Streamlit expert, by the way. I actually just learned Streamlit recently. But if you're familiar with Streamlit, you'll understand uh, the session states. It's uh, pretty critical for uh, the bot we're going to be building. All right. This line is just going to set the uh, the tab like it's going to make a speech balloon as the icon, and then uh, we're going to make the title of the tab uh, cat GBT. All right, so next you're going to have your um, API key right here. So you'll need to go into your OpenAI account and make a API key and paste that here. So those will usually start with, um, those start with SK. So if you're not sure how to find that, you should be able to find it right here under this lock icon API keys in your OpenAI account. All right, so uh, next we have this if statement. It's gonna be on uh, the sidebar. We're going to have a start chat button. And if that button gets pressed, we're gonna start the uh, chat state as equal to true. And then we're going to create a thread so you know that thing from OpenAI threads, we're gonna create one, and then we're gonna take that thread ID and pass it into the uh, thread ID session state. So again, these session states, I mean, one way I think of them is it helps you to save uh, different variables across uh, buttons and different places in uh, Streamlit. All right, so next, like the main area, I just added a title and I added a little like thing below the title. So that's just ST title, ST right. It's just gonna have a cat GBT and then a bunch of mails. All right, next I have a, another button here called exit chat. And this just gives the user the option, like if they um, don't wanna continue with this thread, you know, like sometimes you're chatting with OpenAI and you actually giving you answers so wrong. I've had this experience where I actually want to clear all of its memory, all of the context and start a new chat. So that's what this is doing. You have this uh, exit chat button. So if you press the exit chat button, it's gonna set all of these uh, session states to false. It's gonna clear the uh, thread ID. It's gonna clear all the messages. So uh, next we have another if where, you know, if the chat is started if session states start chat what what do we want to happen here so let's build all of that now all right so one we'll have the open ai model set that here i'm using gpt4 1106 preview that's the one with uh like 120k tokens plus it's uh pretty nice i i really like this uh model but feel free to use a different one if you want if message is not in session state then st session st session state dot messages will just be uh, empty. This is important to display all of the existing messages in the chat. So we have st markdown and then message content, which is going to be displayed. All right. Next up, we have a kind of default uh, chat input. So this is a chat input in uh, Streamlit, and then you. I also have a default, which I don't know. I just put meow meow, put whatever you want in your default. You can have what's up, enter your chat, whatever. We're appending to the session state a message with the role user and then the content and then whatever was entered into that prompt there. All right, so important part now, uh, look at this uh, documentation here where we have a client beta threads message dot create and then you enter your thread ID. You have your role of the user, and then you have the content here. So this is how we add a message to the thread. And if we go back to my code, you can see I added this um, same thing right in here, except we have our thread ID using uh, the streamlit session state dot thread ID. 
And then we also have our content, which is going to be the prompt entered in the uh, chat input box. Next, we have this run, which is going to be the next thing we add to our code. Uh, you see the step four, uh, where we're going to have again the thread ID, the assistant ID. And then they said optionally, you can pass in newest instructions that override the default instructions of the assistant. I am going to do that. Um, I've found that occasionally my default instructions don't always work as well. So I like to have the run um, optional instructions. It seems to work better for me. All right, so you see that we have our run here with our thread ID, the assistant ID, like I mentioned, and then the instructions, which are uh, kind of long. It's just me going on and on about how this assistant is a cat and how it should meow and blah, blah, blah. Next, uh, we'll do step five of this documentation. By the way, documentation will be in the description. Highly recommend you read all of the assistant API documentation. Anyway, so next step is the checking if it's completed. So you see, you can periodically retrieve the run to check on its status to see if it's moved to complete. So this is important for us to do. We want to make sure that our run is complete. This is where our time import is going to come in. Here, while the run status is not completed, so we're going to want to uh, do time.sleep for just a tiny, tiny bit. And then we'll just check the run ID and the thread ID until this is uh, complete. All right, next, we're going to get the list of the messages that will be added to the thread. So that's that code right there. All right, and then final thing, we're going to process and display our messages. So that's this code block right here. And to get the message, you need to have like message.content0.text.value. All right, and I'm just going to write a general else, uh, just a ST write click start chat to begin. All right, so we should all be good with our cat GBT. I'm going to uh, save this and add in my real API key. And let's go ahead and run this. So we'll do a uh, streamlet run uh, st test bot dot py. Make sure you've uh, pip installed, you know, streamlet, OpenAI, all that stuff. And uh, this should work then. All right, so we get this new browser and you can see we have our nav where we have a uh, start chat and we have our title cat GPT like chat bot meow 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 I'm a cyber cat and uh, we have the option here to click this button so let's click it and then we have a text window and uh, we'll just start off something simple like hey how are you and let's see if it replies as a cat that is perfect well, exactly what I was going for here it says meow 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 meow. All right, let's continue this combo. All right, let's ask a heavy question, see how CatGBT handles it. Is capital punishment ethical? So again, answered with a lot of males. Let's write, what if it is a squirrel? So this time there is no question mark. So that leads me to believe that if it's a squirrel, capital punishment is okay. So now if we click on exit chat, see our chat's over, click start chat, we get a brand new thread. So that is it. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope you learned something. I think Assistant API is super cool. I'm still definitely learning and playing around with it. Uh, feel free to post comments if you have any questions or uh, let me know about any cool things that you guys end up building. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.